Hi, first graders. Thank you for joining me today for our reading lesson. I have a collection of books up here on my screen, and I want to do a quick review and talk about why we choose books to read. And I wanted to talk about this little elephant and piggy book, I Am Invited to a Party. We did a Mo Willems author study earlier in the year, and we really learned that when we read a book like Elephant and Piggy, we are entertained. It's funny. These characters are really hilarious, and it makes us happy to read these types of books. So sometimes we just read because we want to be entertained. We also did another author study this year, Nicola Davies, and we learned that she is an author that likes to write nonfiction books. And so One Tiny Turtle was one of the books that we studied. As we read this book together, we learned all about sea turtles. This book was full of amazing facts about sea turtles. And we talked about how her style of writing is really unique. She likes to do fun things with her print, her font, and she likes to add little facts that are kind of hidden throughout. And she has beautiful illustrations. And so sometimes we read just to get more information about a topic. I also found this book on my bookcase um, at home here. And this one is a National Geographic kids book and it's about oceans. And so I know as a reader, if I open this book, I'm going to learn all about sea life, things in the ocean. I see lots of beautiful photos. I see lots of facts and charts. This is a different style of writing. We know that nonfiction has a special way that it's organized. We see bold print. We see photo captions to help us understand what we read. And so sometimes we just read a book so that we can learn more about something, right? And we also just recently learned that we can discover stories that have been around for a long, long time. And these types of folk tales are special because they usually have a lesson to be learned. And they're entertaining and fun and the characters usually talk. And so that's another way we can learn. Today we're going to read a very special book. And this was given to me by Mrs. Evans. And I'm so grateful for it because I really, really love this book. And this book is called Come With Me. This book is going to be one where we think about the message. It's not a silly book, it's not nonfiction, and it's definitely not a folk tale. This is one where, as a reader, our goal is to think about what can we take away from this? What is the message that this author is trying to tell us? That is our learning target today, to understand that an author often gives a message in a story. And I chose this book because we are in a very strange time right now. We have things that are going on in the world that we might feel like we can't control. And I think this has a really good message for us today to talk about. We have one more learning target, so we've got two today. We're going to be thinking about the message. We're also going to be making connections to our own lives. We know that good readers do this all of the time. It's called making a text to self. So book to you, right? Thinking about how this book relates to your own life. Okay, those are our two goals. I would like for you just to listen. I want you to pay really close attention to the illustrations and the facial expressions of the characters. And we'll talk about what we think it might mean at the very end. Come with me. All over the world, the news told and told and retold of anger and hatred, people against people. And the little girl was frightened by everything she heard and saw and felt. You can see by her facial expression that she's worried. She asked her papa if there was something she could do to make the world a better place. Her papa said, come with me. Hand in hand, they walked out the door to the subway. Waiting there on the platform, her papa tipped his hat to those he met. So the little girl did too. 
It's interesting, you can see the facial expressions. Some look kind of bored, some look kind of mean, some look kind of curious, but this one woman raises her hand ever so slightly to say hello. They rode the train through the tunnels underground. The girl and her papa were brave and kind, and that day they won a tiny battle over fear for themselves and for the people of the world. The news kept telling of anger and hatred, and the little girl asked her mama what she could do to make the world a better place. Her mama said, come with me. They went to their grocery to buy some things for dinner. And I want you to pay really close attention to this illustration. The name of the grocery store, it says import, corner of the world. Looks like there might be a Chinese lantern over here and some people maybe who have a different religion and all kinds of food from all over the world, all kinds of people. Because one person doesn't represent a family or a race or the people of a land. Her mama cooked and the girl set the table piece by piece as she'd always done. Plate in the middle, knife and spoon to the right, fork on the left, napkin by its side, water glass. The little girl sat with her mama and her papa and they ate together. Her dog nuzzled her under the table. She scratched his head. I want to do something of my own, she said. Can I walk the dog? I wonder what her parents are thinking right now. Look at their expressions. They look a little bit nervous, don't they? Her parents looked at each other and they looked at their child. They let her go and sent a message to the world. They would not live in fear. And when the little girl opened the door, the boy across the hall opened his door too. Where are you going? He asked. The little girl said, come with me because two people together are stronger than one. The girl, the boy, and the dog were happy to be out. One step at a time, they understood what they could do to make the world a better place. They could go on. Brave, gentle, strong, and kind to one another and all living things. What I like about this illustration is that we start to see some grown-up feet over here in the corner. As tiny as it was, their part mattered to the world. You can see there's more people who are coming. They're interested. Your part matters too. Come with me. And that's how the book ends. And before we talk about the message, let's jump over to our second goal here, to make connections to the story, thinking about our own lives. Now you may be thinking, Mrs. Truesdale, we can't do what this little girl is doing. We can't go out. We can't do very much outside. We are in a strange place right now where we're not really supposed to leave our homes too much. But I think that even though there are differences between our lives and the life of this little girl, I think we can still take away the message here. So in the beginning, the little girl is really kind of afraid of what's going on in the world. And I think sometimes we hear things on the news, we hear things on the radio, or maybe grownups that are talking, and it's kind of scary. Right? We don't really understand what's going on right now. 
just like this little girl in the story. And her papa tells her that it's okay. Even the smallest act of saying hello to someone, tipping your hat, kind of bowing to someone and saying hello, that's such a small thing, but it made a difference to this person here who's also saying hello, right? And it's proving to the little girl that how we act and what we do really does matter. And then they ride home and then her mama takes her out to the grocery store and they have a nice quiet dinner as a family together. And those were things that her parents helped her do. And then the little girl decides she wants to do something by herself. And I'm thinking the parents at first don't think it's a good idea. They might be thinking, oh, it's too scary out there. Something might happen. But then they decide to let her go. And she has a friend that joins her. And it starts as two friends. And then it ends up with a bunch of kids who are creating a beautiful picture out of chalk and the grown-ups join in. And this isn't a very big thing to do, right? Drawing a picture with chalk, that's something that we can all do. But look at how many people it affected. And again, we're a little bit limited right now. We can't be near one another so that we can stay safe. But I'm wondering if this book might inspire us to do something to make the world a better place. I think that our message, when we go back to this first learning target, what is the message? I think this page tells us, as tiny as it was, their part mattered to the world. I think that this is what we need to take away from this book that even though we're supposed to be at home right now and we can't see our friends and we can't be together as a class, we can still do tiny things to make the world a better place. And I know that whenever I do something to make the world a better place, it makes my heart happy. And then I just wanna keep doing more and more. So I'm wondering if this might be the start of something. So I'm going, to attach a Flipgrid next. And I want you to listen to my message in the Flipgrid. And then I want you to think about something small that you can do to make the world a better place. Okay, that's your challenge. Thanks for listening to this beautiful book and check out the Flipgrid because that's next.